So now we're going to look at what you do if both powers are even, right? So we have cosine to the fourth power, sine is squared, two even powers. What you have to do is you have to make use of these power reduction formulas here. Um, these half angle formulas, if you want to call them that, or double angle formulas. All right, so what we need to do is we need to realize that, of course, cos to the 4 is cos squared x squared. And we have to do these substitutions for actually both sine and cosine. Okay? Um, you're never going to get away with a simple u substitution for these, unfortunately. So here we get 1 plus cos 2x over 2. That whole thing is squared, right? So there's cos squared and squared. And then we have 1 minus cos 2x over 2. Okay, and not squared because we just have that one once. dx. Okay, and unfortunately there, there's nothing for it on this but to multiply everything out, okay? Um, there's, there's overall a factor of 8 there that we could bring up front, okay? So we have 1 plus cos 2x times 1 plus cos 2x times 1 minus cos 2x. I might decide that that difference of squares is the easier one to multiply out first. So I get 1 plus cos 2x times 1 minus cos squared 2x. Let's keep going. Multiply out once more. So we get 1. And then there's a cos 2x. And then there's a cos squared 2x. And then finally, minus cos cubed 2x. OK. We know what to do. We know what to do. Actually, we know what to do here as well, because this one, We can write this as 1 plus cos. So we double the angle again, we get to 4x over 2, right? So we're applying this identity a second time, this time with 2x on the left, so we get 4x on the right. OK? And here, oh, well, here now we have an odd power, right? So we can write this as. 1 minus sine squared 2x times cos 2x, right? Because 1 minus sine squared gives me cos squared. Cos squared times cos gives me cos cubed, right? We get to see all the techniques, right, all rolled into one. Maybe you find this amusing. Maybe you find it horrifying. Depends on your perspective on these things, OK? All right, so we have 1 over 8 times the integral of, let's see, 1, we can, you know, we can even combine this up, right? So here we have, if we push that minus sign through, this is minus 1 half minus 1 half cos 4x. So I'm going to take this 1 and subtract 1 half. I'm going to combine those two constants. So I have this. I have a half plus cos 2x minus 1 half cos 4x. Close that off. Now I have one term left, but I'm going to write that in a separate integral, and not just because I ran out of room, but also because we need to do a substitution there, right? So this we have 1 minus 
sine squared 2x cos 2x dx. Okay, so on this one, I'm going to let u equal to sine 2x, so du is 2 cos 2x dx. All right, let's see if we can do this. Um, 1 over 8 times a half, there's 1 over 16. I'm going to start doing my antiderivatives. So 1 over 16, integrate that. We get x cosine gets sine, but that 2, right? We get sine 2x, but we've got to divide by 2. So we get um, 1 over 16 sine 2x. Coming to this one, we're going to get sine 4x, but we've got to divide by 4. So we're, we have a quarter times a half times an eighth. 1 over 64. Okay. Finally, 1 over 8. And here we're just going to have, um, so we still have an integral. We've got 1 minus u squared times 1 half times du. Almost there. So, all together, 1 over 16x plus 1 over 16 sine 2x minus 1 over 64 sine 4x um, minus 1 over 16. So that's going to give me u and u is sine 2x. Okay. We got that. And then we're going to have 1 over 16. That's going to give me u cubed over 3. 16 over 3 is 48 minus minus is plus. 1 over 48 sine cubed 2x plus c. Okay, you got it all the way done. I guess we do have one simplification, right? Those two terms seem to cancel. Okay, so maybe it's not so bad after all, right? 1 over 16x minus 1 over 64 sine 4x, 1 over 48 sine cubed 2x. It's a bit of a mouthful. It's a fair amount of work, right? It's, it's tedious, but we can get there. Um, Maybe, maybe this, this particular integral is not your cup of tea, but you know, it's doable if we're patient. Uh, also important to keep in mind, um, you will be encountering these integrals as you move on, um, once you get to say area of polar curves and, and once you get to say multivariable calculus and you're doing things like double integrals in polar coordinates, integrals of this type have a habit of popping up so you need to know how to handle them. Um, fortunately, as long as you're careful, and systematic and you follow procedures, um, you can get to the answer.